Just read me. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dino. If it sounds a little hissy in here today, that's because I've got pretty much every source of heat that I can find trying to heat the shed up today. It's about minus 15 out today. Beautiful, clear, sunny skies. But I want to get to work on my DR650 here, so I need it to be a little bit warm. Now, from the title screen, you've probably figured out that today's project is going to be servicing the rear suspension on my DR650. And this has been something that I've been procrastinating for a while now. I keep saying I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, but I've watched some serious horror stories on people that have tried to do this and ran into problems. But I'm pretty confident I've done enough reading that I'm going to get it to go fairly smoothly and you'll be able to follow along. Now I'm hoping to do this in one video, but we'll see how long it is. If it runs a little bit longer than I expected, I might break it into three segments. The first segment would be removing the shock from the bike itself, because I want to take it out, have a look at it, and I'm considering having it revalved. I just have to look at the cost. It's expensive and, you know, everybody's watching their pennies right now. The second video would probably be uh, cleaning and re-lubing the lower linkage at the bottom of the shock. And then the third video would be about removing the swing arm itself and uh, servicing the swing arm bearings. But we'll just see how fast this goes. I want to make sure I do it clear enough that you can follow along. And uh, why don't we get started right now? As I said earlier, I have watched a number of videos doing this and some of them can go sideways pretty fast. So you need to be sort of prepared for that. The one that really comes to mind is Mark over at Biker Bits in Australia. He's got a fantastic channel and his videos on doing this really do show you how things can go sideways. Like Mark, I'm an amateur. I'm not a professional mechanic. I don't have all the tools that are available, but his perseverance, did he did manage to get it done. I took a few notes from his videos, the first of which was I applied some PB Blaster penetrating lubricant to all of the fasteners down on that lower linkage and the bottom of the shock tower for the last couple days to try and help ease the removal of those bolts if they are stiff. And it's something I would recommend that everybody does. The second thing I took away from him is I really watched him struggle pulling the shock assembly and coil spring out the bottom of the bike. And I thought it just didn't look quite right. So I went back to the manual and sure enough, the manual says that the shock should actually come out through the top. You remove the air box assembly, then you can get access to all of the bolts that you need to, to undo that shock tower and it should pull out through the top. And that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do, is remove the seat and side covers. Removing the DR seat starts by removing this fastener using a screwdriver and this is a JIS Japanese Industrial Standard screwdriver. Once the fastener's out the side panels slide right off. This exposes this bolt here and I'm going to use a 12 millimeter six point socket to get the two fasteners out. Like most of my projects as I take fasteners out, I'm going to group them into Ziploc bags. So this one is the seat and side cover bolts. 
and then I put them in some kind of a container so I keep everything straight. I really don't know how involved this project's gonna be, but the last thing I wanna do is lose fasteners or later on not know which ones I need to put back into the bike. It's a tip that's helped me and it'll probably help you too on projects like this. I have a few more things on my seat than most people do, including this tank bag up here. But once I get this out of the way, the seats are really easy to get off. I'll just flip that up. Now I can pull up on the back of the seat here. And for me, I've got this box that I have to go around and the seat comes right off. I know I've shown this a dozen times in my videos, but I'm not expecting everybody who watches this video to know how to do this. So that's why I'm repetitive. Air box removal starts by removing the fasteners. The first one is on the right side of the motorcycle and it uses a 10 millimeter socket to get this out. I'm also going to have to disconnect the intake bellows from the carburetor so to do this there's a band clamp. You can see the fastener here and I'm going to use my JIS screwdriver again to loosen this off. You don't have to take the fastener all the way out. There's a long screw. You just have to back it off enough that that will slide off the carburetor body. On the top of the air box, there are two 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold the top of the air box in place. And you can see, um, I've actually used this one as a grounding point for some accessories. I'm gonna pull these off. There's one, and I'm just gonna make a mental note. You can see that this little bracket here that holds your uh, carburetor slide breather filter is attached to this. I'm gonna pull that aside, and then I'll pull this out as well. And you can see the whole air box just slid down there. So two bolts, I'll put those with the others, and then we should be able to take this out. This vent hose here is actually attached inside the bike to the air box and I've got to get that off. It's going to be pretty hard to get a shot of that for you. Um, but I'm going to try to use a pair of long reach pliers and pull that thing off of there. I actually got it. These long nose pliers like this, these double jointed pliers are really handy for getting into spots like this and they're relatively cheap. I think I paid about $12 for these on sale at Princess Auto, and they helped me out a lot. There are a lot of these reusable zip ties on the DR650. I'm gonna actually take these ones off of here so that I can move these wires around a little bit better, but you can see the air box is already loose, which is great. It should come out, I'm hoping. Let's get this done. Mm -hmm. Just take your time and it'll come out. As you can see, I took this bellows or this intake tube off of the air box itself to make it easier to get out. It fits on this big hole here. And I also just pulled out the snorkel as well. It's cold in my shop today, so these parts aren't that flexible. But believe me, it just pulls out the top like that and it makes it much easier for you to get this air box in and out. And I can clean all these parts too, which I really like. With the air box out of the way, we can now clearly see where the shock is and we have good access to it. Now the first fastener we're gonna take out is at the top of the shock. You need a 12 millimeter socket and an extension to get to this, but it does have a captured nut on the backside, so you only need one wrench. The same is true for the bottom. This bolt can give you some challenges, so be careful when you go to take this thing out. This is the bolt that Mark from Biker Bits had such a hard time with. So I'm not gonna take any chances. I am gonna use a half inch drive impact gun on this with a six point socket, not a 12 point socket. I don't want to risk rounding that bolt off and not being able to get it out. 
Now I have again soaked this with penetrating oil and I'm going to use this and wrap it out and it should come out relatively easily. If you're ever wondering how I get these kinds of shots, it's using things like this small rig where I can mount a smaller camcorder underneath the bike. It actually works better than a tripod in a lot of cases. The only disadvantage is sometimes it'll vibrate with the bike instead of staying static with the floor, but that's how I do it. I'm just going to let that sit there for a second while I reposition myself. So here is the DR650's rear shock and spring assembly out on the bench here. I've got it clamped in the vise. I'm just going to clean this one up and have a look at it. And anytime you have this assembly out of the motorcycle, you should do an inspection on it. The manual talks about a few things to look at. The first one is just to make sure that the bushings are nice and tight with the bolt itself. There should not be excessive play in there. And this one's really, really good. You should also check just to make sure that all the rubber pieces are in place, like the, the actual bushings themselves. You want to check the shock body for any kind of damage or cracking that may look suspect. And the same goes for the spring itself. You want to make sure that there's no broken coils in there or any cracking that looks out of place to you. Of course, you're also going to want to inspect the shaft itself. You want to make sure that the chrome is in good condition, that the shaft is not visibly bent and that there's no oil leaking past the seals. And this one looks really good. I don't see any of that. I am gonna give this a good cleanup while I've got it out of the bike, just so that I can put it back in and it'll look nice. If you do run into problems with this, the manual will tell you that parts are not available to actually rebuild these from Suzuki. However, there are a lot of videos out there that show that these shocks are indeed serviceable so you just need to get a hold of a local dealer uh, or local shock uh, repair center and more than likely they'll be able to help you out. Now I just want to point out here on this reservoir, this is actually where your compression damping adjustment is. There's a small screw head here that you can use a flat bladed screwdriver and rotate this either clockwise or counterclockwise to make the shock stiffer on compression. Now there's 22 detents in here and I like to cycle this every once in a while just to make sure those don't seize up. The other area that you are going to want to inspect while you have this shock and spring assembly out is the bottom of the shock, this clevis here. Now like anything, you're just going to basically be looking at it for any kind of cracks, or bends or damage that doesn't look right. You don't need to be a mechanic to see things that are out of place. On top of this, you're going to want to take the bolt from there and fit it in through the blind side, the side with no threads, and make sure that the shoulder is nice and tight in there. There's not a lot of excessive play and the hole is not rounded out. You're then going to want to thread it in by hand to make sure that the threads themselves are in good shape. It's never a bad idea to chase these threads out with a tap while you've got it out of the bike. And I'll include the size and the thread pitch for this bolt to make sure that you have it if you want to choose to do that. What's interesting is there's a second hole here. And this second hole is actually where you would insert the bolt if you wanted to lower the seat height of the bike. By installing the bolt in this hole and connecting it to the lower suspension, 
the bike will actually be lowered by about 1.6 inches. Now this can be matched by the front end by reversing a few internal components in the fork, thus lowering the entire seat height close to two inches once you're done. It's a really, really clever design that Suzuki engineered right from the factory. So even though the bike is, I don't know, 30 some odd years old now in terms of design, it still has some great features, like this tuning fork. Well, I think I am gonna end the video here. We've covered a lot of ground getting this shock out of the DR650 and up onto the bench, and I hope that it was informative and shows you the process to do that. We also talked about what to look for when you're inspecting your shock, whether it's on a DR or any other motorcycle, or even a snowmobile. It should give you some points to look for for indications your shock needs some service. And speaking of service, the other reason I'm ending the video today is I'm gonna take this to my local shock servicer and have them rebuild it, and I'm gonna take you along as well. Now, I'm not sure what they're gonna suggest in terms of valving. The bike works really well for me now. I just think it'll be interesting to see how they pull that apart, and I wanna show you that as well. So that's the other reason that I'm ending the video today. I'll get right to work on the rest of the rear suspension, taking apart the linkage in the rear swing arm in the next video. Until then, I'm gonna to get to work cleaning the rest of this off of here. I really hope you enjoyed today's content, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Again, it really helps me to understand what you wanna watch. All right, I'm gonna get back to work. You have yourself a great day, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.